So let's say I took this, um, this box here, edit the extrusion, and because this is a uh, class on curves, probably want to delete that square stuff, and you know, I want to do a simple circle, let's say. So here it is, and put it right there. For those of you that have uh, ever worked in the family editor before, show of hands, how many of you are, yeah, I hope so, oh good. Um, I was really hoping, I, I should have asked you that first. Could be like, oh, no, we're all newbies, oops, okay, this is a little more advanced. Um, well, what's the general rule that we say about the family editor then, right? You, you know, it's bones, muscle, skin, and you always dimension references, and then you attach your geometry to references, right? That's our general rule of thumb, right? Does that sound weird to anybody? No? Okay, good. Um, hopefully you've all heard that before. Well, sometimes you've got to break the rules. And when you're flexing curves, this is one of those times. So um, there is no way to go align and lock to the edge of a circle, right? So right, at, right off the bat, simple curve, circle, I can't constrain it unless I'm willing to put a, a dimension directly on the curve, okay? Now, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but this is certainly uh, a common thing, is you've got to kind of be willing to break that rule a little bit. And I'm just going to label this as R, and I'll click Finish here. Now, in the handout, I, um, I go in and I put formulas here to, uh, to say that R... Um, width, rather, is r times 2, and uh, you know, same thing for, for depth. Otherwise, it, let me just do it in one direction. Otherwise, when you flex this, right, the uh, circle will flex, the width will flex, but of course that won't. There's no relationship between those reference planes in the circle unless I do it with a formula over here. So the question before we started the session is, you know, about formulas, when do you do it? Well, sometimes that's the reason you do it, is because it's the only way to make a connection between two different things, right? So assuming that you want the reference planes to still define the bounding box of this curved form, then you would use the formula there in that case because they are not driving the geometry, the, the R uh, parameter is. But that's certainly optional, right? Does everybody understand that that's optional? I really don't have to do that. Um, I could take the formula out, and this radius parameter will still work just fine. Okay, so that's simple warm-up exercise. Now, if we go back and kind of edit this thing again and delete the circle, and let me flex the width and depth to be equal again. Well, actually, no, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's talk about an ellipse. Well, mathematically, a circle is just a special case of an ellipse, right? You take a cone and you cut it straight across, you get a circle, and you start tilting that cone, you get an ellipse, okay? So that's, you know, from high school geometry. My apologies, but if anybody's got, um, you know, bad memories of high school geometry, I'm going to mention it again, okay? Sorry. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, here's, a, here's an ellipse, and I'll draw it the same way. Now, we really have two options uh, with the ellipse. Um, the first is to do what I just did with the circle, Go ahead and um, do direct attachment of those parameters. I'm just making the temporary dimension permanent, right? And then label these. And I'll, I'll borrow um, R, I guess, for the long one. And it's going to flex, you know, probably a bad idea. Let me, uh, I'm going to get to that in a minute. I don't want to get ahead of myself here. So let me just make sure that that's two. And I'll flex it. And then this one, I've got to create a new one. Call that Y. And it probably makes more sense for R to not be R anymore. So I'll change that to, uh, to X. And um, how many of you are on R2, 16 R2? About half the room. You probably noticed the difference in my family types dialog. OK. Um, these are the same buttons you have over here if you're not in R2. They're just icons now, right? Got to make everything into hieroglyphics because people like that. OK. So um, anyway, we could do the same thing with the width and depth for, uh, parameters by making them formulas. And again, uh, x and y would be half of the width and depth, right? And I'm going to skip that step. But anyway, if I flex these now, um, you know, it will drive the shape of the ellipse. And because I didn't bother uh, uh, attaching the dimensions to the reference planes, they don't flex along with it, uh, the exercise in the handout uh, you know, I have you do that step. Okay, so all of this stuff is just the first page of the, you know, of the, uh, uh, the cheat sheet there, and the first couple pages of the
the actual handout. Now, um, in, if anybody's following along in the actual PDF on their iPad or something, then in page six of the actual handout, down toward the bottom is center mark visible, and that's on page two of the cheat sheet, okay? Second page of the cheat sheet. So one of the things that we can do with uh, any curve, any curve that's based on a circle or an arc, okay, so not a spline, uh, but any curve that's based on a circle or an arc, we can display the center mark, okay? So that's really helpful um, in this case, notice what the ellipse did. You see how it didn't, it completely ignored uh, what was going on with the other reference planes? And if you wanted it to stay centered on this reference plane over here, for example, then you would turn on the center mark, you'd get this, you know, little X right there, and then you can do a line and lock, and a line and lock, and now no matter what you do, uh, that you know, ellipse or circle will always stay associated with that center position, which when we're doing some of these more complex curves later is going to be really important. So we'll see that. The other thing that we want to look at here is, um, and I think I need a different file to illustrate this one. So um, all, my fire, all my files are numbered and sequenced. So I'm going to close this one. 